We just learned that actions and action creators get fired off or dispatched with information about what happened. So if I go ahead and uh, comment on a photo, it will say Wes commented neat on this specific photo. What it doesn't do is update our state, which is our store in Redux. So we need to create what's called a reducer on the other end to be able to handle and update the actual state. I like to think of actions as just regular JavaScript events that get fired off. So in the browser, you can listen for a click or a scroll or a hover on something. And uh, those events happen regardless. But if nobody is actually specifically listening to that click, then nothing gets happening. So we need to create a reducer to handle the data for that. So let's go ahead into our application here. We're going to create another folder uh, called reducers. And the reason why we create a folder is that uh, we create a reducer for every single piece of state. Now, uh, what are the pieces of state that we actually have? If we open up our store.js here, you'll see that our state is composed of two things. We have a whole bunch of posts and we have a whole bunch of comments that posts are being loaded in from the post file and the comments are being loaded in from the comments file. And you may have six or seven different pieces of your actual state, depending on how large your application is. And we need to create a reducer for each piece of state. So when posts get updated, we run the post reducer. And when we run, when comments get updated, we run the comments reducer. And eventually those two reducers are going to get reduced into a single big one, but it's getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. Let's take a quick look at how we can create a reducer for one of them. So uh, we go to our reducers folder and we're going to create a new file called posts.js. And inside of that, we just need to create a function. Why? Because uh, let's let's do a little comment right here. A reducer takes in two things. One, it takes in the action, so information about what happened. And then it also takes in uh, a copy of current state, right? Because ideally, what's going to happen is it's going to say, OK, here's what happened which is the action. And here is the store or the state that we have. And what we're going to do is say, OK, let me see. And we're going to return a brand new copy or an updated copy of our actual store, right? So in comes the store and information about what happened. We do a bit of work on it, like maybe update the number of people that have liked this specific photo. And then we then return the new updated store. And then from that point, React is going to take over and do everything it needs to do in terms of updating the, the UI and uh, all of its virtual DOM special stuff. So uh, we are going to create a post reducer right here. So we'll say function posts. And uh, we give it state equals that. Now, why do we, we do that? Because um, the first time that this runs, this function right here, state is not going to be equal to anything. So we're going to set it. This is using ES6 default parameters here. We're going to set it to be an empty array right there. And then we are also going to pass along the action. Now, for now, let's just go ahead and console log the state and the action just so we can make sure that it's working once we've got it all hooked up. And let's just return state. Why? Uh, because the way that these reducers work is it's going to take in state, it's going to modify it, and it's going to return state. And we're going to have a big old switch statement here. But for now, let's just return it, make sure that it actually works. Uh, and then just take this uh, function posts and make sure that you uh, export it. So we're going to say export default posts. And take this code here and just create a secondary reducer for our comments. We'll call that comments.js. Paste it in there. And we're going to name that comments. Now, one thing about Redux is that we can only really have one reducer. So we've created comments reducer and we created our post reducer, but we need to put them into what's called a root reducer in order for us to use it. So we sort of like make a reducer for each part of state, like posts and comments, and then we put them into one big reducer and it's going to be able to handle it from there. So in reducer, let's make an index.js file. And this is exactly where if we go to our store.js, remember we did this import root reducer from reducers forward slash index. I said, we're going to create that in a second. Now we're actually going to be creating it. So uh, what do we do inside of that one? Well, first of all, we need to import a method called combine 
reducers, and that needs to come from Redux itself. We also need to import the router reducer, and I'll show you why we need this in just a second from React Router Redux package. And then we need to import our posts from our posts reducer, and we need to import our comments from our comments. Now you'll notice that I'm using dot forward slash, and that's because we want to pull in this comments reducer and we want to pull in this post reducer because we're going to take this, these two reducers and make them into one. So finally, we do const root reducer equals combine reducers, and we pass it uh, our posts, we pass it our comments, and then finally, we also need to pass it the routing because uh, really there's three things that are going to live in our state, the posts, the comments, and then also the changes of our URLs here. So every time I change, that's going to be logged in our Redux as well. So we want to say routing is set to router reducer. And why, what is that? We just pulled it in from here, put it in there, and then finally we are going to export it. Good. So we've got that up and running. Before we go any further, let's make sure we've got something up and running. So in the next video, we're going to actually hook it up to our application so we can uh, fire off our actions and, and make sure that these are running. Uh, and then we can actually start getting into the, the nitty gritty of displaying and, and hooking it up to UI. Because the last couple of videos, really, we've just been coding. And it, it's sort of a lot to put together uh, before we can actually see it run. Okay.